guys, it's Merce. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. <sighs> this has been a tough week for me. It's been a really hard one. I have depression, like so many of us do, um, but it's been a really hard week. So this is why I moved the video to Saturday to give myself some extra time. And sometimes when I'm feeling really down, making a video can make me feel better. Even though it was really hard preparing tonight, <laughs> doing all the things that I normally love, getting ready, lighting the candles, you know, getting the room to look the way I want it to look, stuff like that. Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> but I think when you have something that you do that you love. Sometimes it's just going through the motions and sometimes I I just start up <laughs> and uh, that's really what I'm hoping to do today. So I perused my library and I picked out two things that I think would work well together and they are The Overbridge by Deep Arya and Collection of Horror Manga by Junji Ito. These were both excellent and I, I'm really excited to talk about them. Uh, but first, let's get into some message shout outs and um, then we'll get into these book reviews. The Bookish Report, who um, actually has a really great booktube channel you should check out, uh, he says, that shawl over your head made me laugh. <laughs> The lighting was perfect. I feel like anytime I can put something over my head, I definitely do it. Like if something has a hood or it's a scarf or anything, I'm constantly wrapping my head into it. Um, I, I don't know why. I think it's just uh, it's just really comfy. Books of Blood, also another uh, horror booktuber you should check out. Um, he says, between this one and Nightworms, I don't know which subscription box is the coolest. So these messages are from the Creepy Crate unboxing I did earlier this week. And yeah, I mean, the I think the Nightworms personally is probably more cooler to me because it's a very small company and also it's a lot of indie writers and just, um, it's, it's less of a company and kind of more, of a group of people who are doing something they love, you know what I mean? Uh, they have a bunch of really rad releases and all kinds of stuff, and I would totally get it, but they don't ship to Germany, so... <laughs> Which is probably a good thing because, honestly, the shipping cost is probably not going to be worth it. And this is actually a comment on a very old video that I did. It was probably about, oh, I don't know, maybe a year ago, and it was... <laughs> I took my four favorite um, ghosts caught on tape videos and just talked about why I like them, but then also why I thought they were fake. And uh, Haggis McBaggis says, <laughs> I agree with your analysis of the fourth video. My initial impression was that he used landscape fabric loosely attached to the window. It doesn't move at all until it suddenly goes under the bed. And yeah, I totally agree. Like I, one of my things was to kind of like think about how I would try to pull this off. Um, just um, in this video specifically, there is an entity that's in a window and it flies underneath the bed. And it's very interesting. So it was interesting to think about how would you pull it off with very minimal, you know, video editing software knowledge and stuff like that. So it was just like food for thought type stuff. Um, but now, the more that I get into video editing, the more and more and more apparent it is to me how easy and how actually much more complex and nuanced uh, you're able to get now. Uh, so when I see uh, ghost and on caught on tape videos now, I'm not as intrigued as I was before because the veil has been lifted a little bit. So thank you guys so much for your comments. I love them as usual. Now let's get into the book reviews. So for Venus in the Blind Spot, I don't have a setup for you because this is a collection of short stories or horror manga. So there are 10 illustrated stories in here and they are all really good. I think the ones that I liked the most, like the ones that kind of 
I don't know, it kind of like got into my skin was the human chair was really, really great. And the human chair is like this gothic story that takes place in like 1920s, 1930s Japan. And it's about a female writer who has this chair and she begins to believe that someone is inside of it. And it's, it's really, really good and unsettling and disturbing and I enjoyed it so much. I'll show you um, something non-spoilery from that. So in this scene, you can see that there's something squiggling in his chair and you can sort of see a face coming out from the center. It's very cool. So the next one was The Licking Woman, I thought was really good and really gross. And this story is really cool. It's, it's kind of about this woman who is uh, committing this crime where she is like wandering the town at night on very humid and warm days. And if she finds you uh, on the street alone, she will attack you by licking your face. But when she licks you, wherever she placed her tongue on your face or your body, it becomes kind of corroded or infected or something. And people are dying from these encounters with this woman. So, you know, the police are on high alert, the neighbors are, are on high alert, and there's this one woman who has a vendetta because this woman um, killed her fiance and her dog. <laughs> so she's like, I'm basically um, so she's going out and uh, hunting this woman down but is she really the menace that we think she is so it, it's really really cool um, it's really gross <laughs> um, like the way that she is illustrated I'll show you the tongue is just like and you can see here it's like the tongue is just really prominent <laughs> But it's a great story. It's, it's very gross, especially too that she wants to be out on these humid evenings, you know, and this is when she attacks people when they're like sweating and hot and uncomfortable. It's like, ugh. The next one I really liked is Venus in the Blind Spot, which is uh, the cover story here. And at first when I read it, I didn't really think a lot about it, but like kind of as time went on and I was thinking more about it, it became kind of more tragic to me, more sad. Um, the story is about a young woman who is really enamored and has a passion to be an academic scholar of aliens. And her father is also involved in some extraterrestrial research as well. And they have a group that's formed and they have members, <laughs> but she's a very, beautiful and alluring and young, so their group is attracting a lot of young men. And something has happened to where all of these young men that are in the group, whenever she walks into a room and she comes within a certain amount of distance, she disappears like a blind spot. The men in the group think that this might have something to do with aliens, and they think that she might be an alien as well. Um, and this story is really, tragic and sad because even though there, there is kind of there's a little bit of like a sci-fi element here underneath it all is definitely a story that we've heard many many times before in regards to how men objectify women and how dangerous that can be for them it just made me really sad okay so there's master umez and me and this is a non-fiction uh, retelling of Junji Ito when he was small and how he got into horror manga and he talks about the different um, publications that he was able to get in his little tiny town and just how his love and passion grew from that so that was actually really cool because you had to see a very private and personal side of Ito and you get this reading list um, based on what has influenced him so much as an artist and just as a fan of horror manga and, and as a kid, you know, just loving creepy crawly stuff, which I think we can all relate to. There's a really funny story in here. It's the sad tale of the principal post and it sort of has this like um, Tales from the Crypt 
feeling, you know, where it's like really short, but it's like, it's just funny it's a gag you know it's it's really it's just really funny and humorous and it's not what I thought it was going to be because when it said principal post I thought principal from a school and a letter but nope that's that is not it at all uh, the enigma of Amagara fault is a really popular one um, I know my boyfriend really loves the story he was telling me about it and it's really cool it has this kind of like weird tales vibe, you know? <laughs> it's uh, really, really interesting um, and bizarre. You know, I love this bizarreness that Ido brings, and I, I like that, like mixed in with um, ghosts and the supernatural and horror, because life is weird, and weird shit happens. Um, this, so there's a lot, the last story in here is called Keepsake. I like this one a lot because it's really weird and it's really gross. And it takes, it starts, it starts off right out the bat in a cemetery. And what happens is that some guy hears a baby crying in a cemetery. And when they follow the sound of the baby cries, they find a grave of a long dead woman with a newborn coming out of her body. And because a baby has been born from a corpse, this has <laughs> made the, uh, family at the time and the village very uncomfortable and they feel like it's bad omen and you know this is not natural and all this kind of stuff so the story goes on to tell how that happened which was a bit of a surprise <laughs> but um it was really gross and it was really really cool so i what i loved all about this was like obviously ito is definitely a fan of gothic uh, literature and he just really adapts it into Japanese culture so well. Um, it's, I think it's like a perfect mix, you know, because of the superstitions in Japanese folklore and culture of, you know, unrequited love and uh, unfinished business and unnatural acts of nature, like all those type of things coming together. It's so cool. I enjoyed this so, so much, even more than I thought I would. All of the illustrations are phenomenal. Um, it's just, it's just so cool. I, I, I definitely want to read more. This has sort of really piqued my interest for, for I don't even know, I mean, if it's, if it's specifically like Japanese horror manga or if this is just Ito horror, you know what I mean? Because I don't really have a lot of, I don't have a big enough, um, repertoire, I guess, to say. So I think I'm definitely going to get more Ito and, you know, probably start experimenting a little bit more in more Japanese horror manga because I don't know how I missed it, but my name is all over this stuff, <laughs> you know, like in regards to what I like. So I gave this five stars. It is fantastic. I don't even know what else to say. It's super cool. with a man just waking out of a blackout inside of his car. He's on a bridge and he's surrounded by many, many other automobiles, but there's no one in them. And it's very quiet. It's eerily silent. He can't remember what happened, if there was an accident, if something had stopped the world, but there was no one there to tell him anything. There was no one there to help him figure it out. After his head clears and he ruminates a little bit about what he was doing before the blackout, which was that he was at the courthouse, he was divorcing his wife and trying to get custody of their young daughter. He decides to get out of the car and see if there's anyone else around. And eventually he runs across a man with a briefcase who's very happy to see another human face. They meet, they talk, but they don't know what's going on. Eventually, a few more people are added to their little group. And they begin to walk from one side of the bridge to the other, which is actually a very huge distance. And there are a lot of weird and strange things happening. There's a fog. There's noises in the fog. There's sounds of thunder. There's strange rains. There's all kinds of different weird stuff happening. 
They keep looking for answers as they walk the bridge. And they do receive those answers, but they're not anything what they expected it to be. And that's how our story begins. So this is a cosmic horror story that's definitely paying a lot of homage, I think, to H.P. Lovecraft. The writing style is that type of writing style you might see from writers who are from the, like, the 1930s, 1940s, this kind of first-person, observational, uh, ruminating kind of uh, uh, dialogue that sounds a little bit antiquated. Um, so you do have that feel of like the 1920s, 1930s, which I think for this it fits, even though I don't think this is the era that it's actually cohabitating, but it still works very well. We have a main character who, um, he's not like that likable or anything. He's a little, he seems to be a little bit judgmental of the people that he's meeting. Um, he also gets glossed in his thoughts constantly. Like he's just, he doesn't talk a lot out of his mouth, but he just ruminates and ruminates and ruminates. So much so, which this is really funny. So much so that at the end of chapters, like as he's ruminating, there's like a loud sound that usually disrupts his thoughts, which is kind of funny and hilarious. There are three other characters who find themselves on the bridge and join this group. There's a little girl named Emily, there's this uh, businessman named Carl, and there's a policewoman um, whose name escapes me at the moment. <laughs> you know, so they, they kind of create this little group and try to survive from one side of the bridge to the other, if that's even possible. They have no idea. Because a lot of the things that are happening on this bridge feel like apocalyptic or doomsday or, you know, just like something is seriously going down and um, nobody knows what it is. And the journey from the beginning of the bridge and going towards the end of the bridge is really fun. A lot of stuff happens, a lot of interesting, weird stuff. So you're like, eh, what's going on? Like, oh, what is it, you know? And you know, our main character is pretty funny. Like I said, in the beginning, he's not like that likable or anything. He's sort of like, he kind of comes off as like, a nice guy who thinks he knows it all, you know? Um, but his journey from like A to B is really cool and kind of funny. I mean, it was funny to me because I think his, his character had some humor to it. At least that's the way that I read into it. And I kind of was then like sort of rooting for him by the end, even though like in the beginning I was like, oh, look at this guy, you know? <laughs> so I don't read a lot of cosmic horror, not because I don't like it, I just, I just love supernatural stuff. It's just like what, it's just what I will gravitate to. It's what I get excited about, you know, so. I don't get excited about cosmic horror. Uh, the Junji Ito stuff, I feel like some of that has a little tinge of like cosmic horror in there. And he probably has like more of that somewhere. I don't know, but you know, we'll see. So I, I'm broadening my horizons, okay? I wanted to review this with the Ito book because I felt that it had that same kind of like weird and bizarre quality, which was kind of cool. I think the only thing I would say is like the writing style itself is like a very specific type of writing style. It is um, something that you will see used often in like video games when they want to um, when they're like writing, like, I don't know if you ever play like any PC horror games where you're in a haunted house and you're trying to like figure out what's going on or whatever. Uh, a lot of the times they'll have like letters and stuff and they'll be written in this, this style, this kind of like slightly antiquated style. But I think it would be cool to see what Arya's uh, own, you know, personal writing style is like. But if I'm right, I think it was specific for this because I think it just goes with the genre. I have another book of Arya's to read. Uh, I think it's about a lighthouse, and he did tell me that it's like in the same universe, you know, so there's there's something similar in, in these worlds going on, so that'll be really cool to read. Um, so my rating for this is four and a half stars. I had a lot of fun. I thought it was really cool. Um, even though it was really short, it still, you know, felt like a, you know, like a full story. So that was awesome. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. And I, I definitely do feel a little better. I feel a little more energized. I had a headache and it kind of went away. So, you know, it's good. Sometimes it's good to just, um, you know, go through the motions and then sometimes it catches. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. I would appreciate that so much. And if you're on Instagram, you can follow me there. I post a bunch of, uh, 
just random stuff that I'm doing if you want to check that out. Thank you so much to the Blood Crone Initiates. Thank you so much. I've had some new members uh, in the last week, so I am really appreciative of that. Thank you. It really makes me feel super happy and um, I appreciate it a lot. So I hope you guys have a really great weekend. Please wear a mask, take care of yourself, and watch out for each other. I will talk to you next time.